Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. John Hodiak in tonight's presentation of... Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a story based on fact. As we recreate the excitement and violence of a fire in an oil field, the story is called Hellfire. Our star, Mr. John Hodiak. Hey, uh, Hap, what's the busiest thing you know? I telephone, Harlow. My wife's always on it. <laughs> well, your car's electrical system is much busier than that, Hap. Why, it goes to work the instant you press the starter and continues every second your engine runs. It works every time you blow the horn, turn on the lights, radio, heater, and electric windshield wipers, to mention just a few. Does everything but talk, eh, Harlow? Right, Hap. And if that electrical system could talk, it would tell you that a checkup of your car's electrical system at periodic intervals is just good business. You mean it pays in smooth economical performance? It eh? sure does, Hap. So friends, treat the important electrical system of your car to a periodic checkup soon. And be ready for those cold driving days ahead. See your car dealer or your nearest authorized auto light service station. You can quickly locate your nearest authorized Autolite service station in the classified section of the phone book under Automobile Electrical Service. Or call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed Hellfire, starring Mr. John Hodiak, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Oil hunters are like farmers and fishermen. They all try to harvest a crop. The main difference between them is that the oil hunter has to find his crop before he can harvest it. Finding a nickel glass of beer in a free lunch counter is a lot easier than finding oil in untested territory. I know. I've been looking for it for a long time. Hear that? That's Betsy, my drilling rig. She's scrounging around on the ground again looking for a crop we can harvest. I say again because... This is the eighth time we've tried this session, and so far, no dice. And there are seven dry holes in this immediate area to mark my failures. I feel pretty bad about it. But not nearly as bad as the rest of the stockholders. No, oh, sir, not nearly as bad. The stockholders are getting impatient, Drake. The way you talked about this field, they felt you would have something for them long before now. Tell them I'm sorry. That isn't enough. According to the brochure you made up for them, this was supposed to be a sure thing. There's no such thing as a sure thing when you're looking for oil. The brochure said conditions out here were most favorable for oil. You saw the results of the test yourself. If ever a series of tests showed possibility for oil, those did. Huh. I brought along a man on the trip down here that I'd like you to meet. Who is he? His name is Hotchkiss, petroleum engineer. Oh. And an expert on costs. Oh. Oh, Mr. Hotchkiss, over yes. here. Mr. Hotchkiss, Mr. Drake. How are you? How are you? Well, find anything? It seems to me this is a very efficient operation, Mr. Drake. Well, I could... However, there are several aspects to be considered which might stamp you as a supreme optimist. You mean the storage tanks? Yes. Well, I'd like to talk to you about that. Yes, I think you'd better. Well, <clears throat> why don't we go back to the office? Mr. McLean? Yes, let's go back. I'm rather anxious to hear what Mr. Drake has to say. Wally! You, Wally! Uh, sorry to bust in like this, Wally. What's the matter? Busted the roller bit off. It's stuck in the casing. I'll be with you in a minute. Uh, sorry, gentlemen. We'll have to postpone this meeting until tomorrow morning. I don't know how long this will take. Your most convenient break, wasn't it? One more snide remark out of you and I'll shove you down the casing right after the bit. Now, Drake, I'm sure Mr. McLean meant no harm. What time do you want us in your office? Be here around 8 a.m. I think everything will be straightened out by then. Eight it is. So long. See you later. Come on, Smiley. Let's get to work. More coffee, Wally? No, thanks, honey. Got to get to the field. McLean and his watchdog will be there at 8. How does it look? I mean, do you still think there's oil? I don't think there's oil. I know it. I won't get another chance to find it if I miss this time. But you're the best wildcatter in the business. 
You won't have any trouble getting enough money to try again. People don't like guys who go around spending their money on hunches. And that's what I did this time. McLean's got questions I can't answer. What are you going to do? What can I do? Tell him the truth. Maybe he'll see it my way and maybe he won't. <laughs> You've got any money to bet, bet that he won't. It's a sure thing. Right, you got to go now. Okay, if I drive out to the field this afternoon? Yeah, sure. I'll be at the shack. If McLean hasn't booted me out by then. Don't talk like that, Wally. I don't like it. <laughs> well, you're a good wife, honey. Might have to be to stay married to you. Now, you get on out to the field and tell that McLean a thing or two. That I will, Dottie. That I will. Well, are you satisfied? Yes, Drake. All except the particular expenditures Mr. Hotchkiss pointed out. Well, come over here, Mr. Hotchkiss. I want to show you something. Very well. You know what this is? Yes, it's a contour map of an intercline. Right. And we're sitting on top of it. Then why are you so concerned with the inquiry Mr. McLean and I are making? Because I have no proof of it. Proof means oil. And until I strike oil, you'll just have to go along with me, that's all. We don't have to do anything, Mr. Drake. You are the one who has to do something, it seems to me. Now, you listen to me. As long as I'm running this operation, I don't have to do any explaining or answering to anybody. Anytime you think you can get somebody to do the job better, you just buy me out. I happen to own a pretty good chunk of stock, too. I know that. But the block of stockholders I represent have the votes necessary. Hey, Wally! We're in. We're in. We just hit the oil sand. Good. The mud's holding back the pressure now. Get the control headset to go and drag up the tubing. I'll be with you in a couple of minutes. Yes, sir, Wally. Any uh, other questions, gentlemen? Yes, I have one. Go ahead. Where do I go to buy stock in this outfit? The next few days were a whirl of activity. We snubbed the tubing into the casing without losing a single drop of oil. After a close check of casing head pressures, we figured we had a major find. Almost 10,000 barrels a day was a potential. After we got the tubing set, we got the Christmas tree fastened. This gadget controls the flow of oil through a system of valves that lead to storage tanks, meters, gas traps, all the places oil goes to when it leaves the well. McLean and Hotchkiss took the first train back to town. I don't think they said more than a dozen words to each other up until train time. Finally, it was finished, or just about. All that remained to do was start the oil flowing out of the tubing through the Christmas tree into the tanks. Hi. Hi. Thought you'd be out at the rig cheering when they turned the valve. I had a few reports to make out to the stockholders. What's the matter, Wally? Aren't you happy? Oh, I'm happy enough, Dolly. I'm just so tired I can't hardly stand up. I'm tired of being sweaty and dirty. As soon as I finish these, I'm going home and take a cold shower. And then I'm going to bed for about a week. Did anybody ever tell you you're a wonderful man? Smiley said so. What? Yeah, I bought him a drink this afternoon. He told me I was wonderful. <laughs> well, at least you haven't lost your sense of humor. <laughs> Do you feel any different? Why, should I? Well, you're married to a wealthy man now. Huh? Well, I don't see hey, any difference. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Trouble! Holy... Fire! The well's on fire! Wally! Wally, don't go! Blue. Big Steve was turning the valves on. She went right up in his face. We couldn't get near him. Smiley, run to the shack. Put in a long distance call to Larry Burnett in Tulsa. Tell him we want him to come down here and put out an oil fire. And tell him the name is Price. Right, Wally. And tell Dottie to contact McLean. Tell him what happened. She knows the number. And tell her to tell McLean to hustle on down here. Okay. Carl, Whitey, yeah. Big Pete, come here. Yeah. You, Whitey, get a team together and start putting up a dirt barricade around the derrick. Right. Make it about 75 feet square and about five feet high. When the valve inserts in that Christmas tree go, there'll be a fire shooting all over the place. Okay. Carl, you go with him. Now, what about the shut-off valves at the tanks, Pete? All off. Fire started before Steve opened up. Check them anyway. Right, Wally. Delaney, take some men and get over to the storehouse where they got some tarps. Take the tarps. I'm Wally. Wally. Over here, Smiley. 
Wally, I called Burnett like you told me to. When's he coming? He ain't. What? He left for Arabia yesterday. They got a fire there. They don't know when he'll be back. Maybe a month. But if the fire eats into the underground pool like it did in Romania in 29, it may be six months. Okay, then. Come on. Well, where are we going? To the shack. I got a few telephone calls to make. Oh, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to put the fire out myself. But you can't do that, Wally. Why not? Well, what do you know about putting out oil fires? I've seen him do it. I know the oil business. What more do you want? Oh, what about equipment? That's what I'm going to make the phone calls for. I just spoke to McLean. He's flying down here. Good. What are you going to do? Burnett can't come. I'm going to do it myself. But you can. That's what I told him. He can't do I it. I say I can, and I'm going to. This is Wally. Get me Fred Stone at the Foster Oil Company in Hobbs, New Mexico. And make it quick. Autolite is bringing you Mr. John Hodiak in Hellfire. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Uh, say, Hap, uh, name something more complex than a fine watch. Why, two fine watches, Harlow. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of the electrical system of your Autolite-equipped car. Every unit is precision-built by Autolite to operate with every other unit as a perfect team to give you the smoothest performance money can buy. You mean units like the Autolite starting motor, generator, distributor, coil, spark plugs, voltage regulator, and battery. Hey, eh, Harlow? Yes, sir, Hap. And just as one misfit part in your watch can gum up the works, so can one wrong part in the electrical system result in poor car performance. And what does all this mean to me, Harlow? It means, Hap, that you should always specify Autolite original service parts for your Autolite-equipped car. Insist on the best for your car, and be sure of the best in performance, because from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. John Hodiak in Elliot Lewis's production of Hellfire, a dramatic report well calculated to keep you in suspense. When I told Smiley and Dottie I was going to put out my oil fire, I meant it. Only trouble was I wasn't sure I could do it. Oh, I'd seen Burnett snuff him out, but that was his business, and he was the best in his business. Me, I was Wally Drake, sort of a high-class roughneck in the business of looking for oil. There's something about seeing the results of your sweat go up in thick, black, greasy smoke that makes you think an all-out effort can kind of compensate for a lack of experience. I put in a call for some of the things I knew I was going to need. Asbestos equipment. High-pressure pumps and hoses to spray me and keep me from being roasted alive while I was working in there. And some dynamite to use when everything else was set. After I finished my call, Smiley and I went out to look at the fire. I still say you're crazy, Wally. No, I'm not. I just don't want to see all my oil burn up while we wait for Burnett to get back from Arabia. But we might be able to do it another way. What other way? Well, we could set up another rig about 300 yards from here. Spud in. And with the right figuring, we could whip stock right into this casing and cut the flow of oil. And how long do you think that would take? Oh, it depends on what angle we want to intersect the casing. You can't do it, Smiley. The tolerances would be too critical. Well, then what about digging a tunnel? We could start about 100 yards. No, I'm not going to take a chance with anyone's life but mine. You'd let Burnett take a chance, wouldn't you? That's what he gets paid for. Now, Smiley, we'll do it just like I said, with me taking the chance. Well, okay, Wally, but let me help. All right. You're going to handle the water to spray me down. Yeah, okay. First, we... Gotta bust old Betsy up. Break up the derrick? Why? Well, take a look at it. Most of the lower part is white hot now. If I get the fire out without getting rid of that white hot steel, the fire would start again as soon as the gas hit it. Well, how are you gonna do it? Push it over? In a way, yeah. I'm gonna set two dynamite charges against the base of it and blow it over. But how do you know which way it'll fall? I don't. I'm not an expert. But it might fall. Yes, it might. Well, once the rig is down, then hey, we... Wally. Stuff you sent for us here. Delaney's getting the pump hooked up now and the dynamite's up to the shack. Oh, thanks, Pete. Come on, Smiley. Smiley? Yeah? I'm scared. So am I. If, uh, 
If things sort of don't go right, uh, see that McLean gives Dottie a square deal on the stock. Sure, pal. And Smiley. What is it, pal? Oh, stop sure palling me. It's just in case anything happens. It hasn't happened yet, so get that sloppy look off your face. Sure, pal. I, I mean, yeah, I want. Did you see Pete? I see Yeah, I saw him. And you're all set, huh? Yeah, I'm all set. Is the dynamite guy here? He's outside having a cup of coffee. They got a canteen set up in the back of the shack. Yell for him. Yeah, okay. Hey, dynamite over here. Let's go to work. Yo. Uh, here he comes. I heard him. My name is Collins, not dynamite. Mind if I bring my coffee in with me? No, only don't slop it on the floor. Sorry. What do you want to know? Can you rig up a charge that'll knock out two legs of the rig? That's my business. Of course I can. Will I have to set two separate charges, or can you make one charge do it? Any way you want it. How long will it take to get the charges ready? I said, how long will it... I heard you, mister. Give me a chance to drink my coffee. It's getting cold. Hey, listen to you. Hold it, Smiley. Who sent you here, Dynamite? My name is Collins. I said, who sent you here, Dynamite? Stone over at Foster Oil said you needed a man with dynamite savvy. He sent me. Well, I'm the guy who needs you because I'm the guy going into the fire. I got a lot of questions to ask. I'm in a hurry. If you want to talk with that coffee cup shoved down your throat, just tell me. Either way, I want answers and I want them quick and civil. Now make up your mind. How do you want to answer me, with or without the coffee cup? No offense, mister. Mr. Drake. Mr. Drake. Now, what do you want to know? How long will it take? How do you want the dynamite? What's the best way? Jellied. We can put it in a can, wrap it in asbestos, and get out in plenty of time if the fire's not too close. How soon can we go? Well, by the time you get all the other stuff ready, I'll be ready. See you out there. Okay. Uh, Collins. Yeah? You forgot your coffee. Ah, oh, thanks. Where's the asbestos suit, Smiley? Oh, it's back of the shack. Let's go. Wally. Uh... Go on, Smiley. I'll be out soon. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry, Wally. I'm sorry. I'm not really heroic. I can't act the part of the brave wife sending her husband out. Oh, Wally, please don't go. I'm so afraid. Well, I, I, I got her, honey. That thing's burning up about ten, fifteen thousand dollars a day. I got her. I don't care if it burns up a million dollars a day. Don't go. Dottie. Dottie. What? Have you ever known me to take wild chances? Oh, sure. I play a hunch as far as it'll stretch, but have I ever gone overboard on a pipe dream? No. But... Then you must know that I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think I could finish it up right, don't you? Dottie, don't you? But, Wally, I'm so frightened. Well, be a little anxious, maybe, but don't be frightened. You stay right here. Don't come out there. I'll be back to see you as soon as we knock old Betsy over on her side, okay? Okay, Wally. Uh, see you, honey. This was going to be the easy part, if there was such a thing. The fire, instead of shooting straight up in the air, was coming out of all the valves of the Christmas tree like a Fourth of July spray. But there was a good side to it. The back two legs of the rig were comparatively free of any flame, but it was still plenty hot. Ready to go? Yeah. Keep me plenty wet. I don't want to broil. Don't worry, you won't. Got the drill pipe ready? Set to go, boys. Okay, let's have it. I'm ready. Smiley kept the water smacking into me while I got close enough with the drill pipe to plant the charge. Then I retreated, paying out the insulated cable as I went. Once I got to the periphery, I raised my hand to Collins. Get that thing off your head. Wow. And now get the rest of this thing off. How'd it go? 
great, huh, Collins? Real great. You did real good. Oh, what now? No, we got to knock that Christmas tree off the tubing. You can't get close enough for that. Even with that monkey suit, you'd be ashes before you got one turn completed. Yeah. Get Pete and Whitey for me. Pete! Oh, Pete, Whitey, come here. Now, what are you going to do? I think I know how I can knock that gadget off. What's up, Smiley? I got a job for you guys. Hiya, Whitey. Hiya, Wally. I want you guys to get me a 50-foot section of casing and a 50-foot section of tubing. We got it. It's right there. Then under... I want you to put the tubing into the casing and weld it so that we can run water between the two of them. What's that going to do? It's going to give me a water-cooled boom that I can swing from a bulldozer to knock the Christmas tree off. It might take a few hours. Okay, but hurry up. All right, Whitey, get it... the tubing. Right. Now, you, Pete, see about the casing. I'll go over to the... Listen, Smiley. When I get there, I'm going to swing the dozer in an arc so that the boom acts like a baseball bat. You keep the water going. Yeah, Wally. I stay down behind the asbestos shield, though. I got it rigged all across the front. I know. But it won't help me much when I swing around. Well, maybe I can rustle up some more. No, this'll do. Let's go. Don't forget now, Smiley, the water. Keep it going. I gotcha. Pete? Go. You stay in the hose with Smiley. Will do. Everything else clear to you guys? Yeah, sure. All right. Okay, then I'm shoving off. Started forward, the long boom projecting like some monstrous weapon. The reassuring stream from Smiley's hose smashed into me as I inched closer to the flaming fountainhead of the Christmas tree. As the end of the boom passed about 20 feet to the left of it, I pulled the right tread of the dozer to a slithering stop. Then the boom began its swing, and when it reached the full momentum of its travel, it slammed into the tree like a flaming pillar of doom. Fire again, shooting straight up into the air. And suddenly, I couldn't feel the water from Smiley's hose, and in that instant, I began to see her. Ow! Smiley! Smiley! Water. i got to get out of here. Fifty feet. Forty. Twenty. Smiley! Smiley. Water. Hey, Wally. Wally, can you hear the me? The water. What happened to the water? Bad coupling. It'll be fixed in a minute. Okay. I'll be ready for the big blast then. Oh, but you'll burn. Let me do it. I'll be all right. This is the easy part. With the Christmas tree off, I can set the dynamite under the fire. I won't let you. Yes, you will. But Dottie... Dottie won't know. Collins? Yeah, Wally? How much will it take? Oh, at least seven, eight gallons of the jelly stuff. Get it ready. Wally? Yeah. I'll do it. I know how to place this stuff. Just get it ready. I'll take it in. Whatever you say. That's what I say. Get going. He stopped yet, Smiley? I can't tell from here. Hey, Pete, a little more beef on this hose. My, my hand's cramping. I got it, Smiley. I see him. I see him. He's getting off the dozer. I swing left a little, Pete. Where? I can't see. Left of the dozer. See? Over there. Yeah, I see him now. Where's he going? I think he's heading for the draw works. Splash him, Pete. He's almost out of range. Now! He's coming out. Here, let me help. Pressure! More pressure back there! Here he comes. Oh, come on, Wally. I don't think he... I better go after. No, no, no. Stay on the hose. Oh, Wally, come on. Keep the water on him. Keep it on him good. Come on, Wally. Come on. He's in the clear. All right, now, Collins. Let her go. She's gone. That 
was all there was to it. Like a blast from the lungs of a thousand typhoons, the dynamite snuffed out the fire as if it were a giant birthday candle. Now I'm fulfilling a part of the wish I had when all this began. I'm staying in bed for at least a week. Hospital food isn't bad, and I get plenty of visitors. The only trouble is they won't let me take a cold shower. But at least it's something to look forward to. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. John Hodiak. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. In 28 plants from coast to coast, Autolite makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, tractors, planes, boats, and industry. These products include batteries such as the famous Autolite Stay Full, ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, both standard and resistor types, Autolite starting motors, generators, coils, distributors, voltage regulators, wire and battery cable, and Autolite original service parts for all Autolite electrical systems. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. So, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, the story of a man who had no fear and so was able to attempt his own death. A new dramatization of C.E. Montague's Action. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morwick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Portions of this program were transcribed. Hellfire was written for Suspense by Ross Murray. In tonight's story, Joseph Kearns was heard as Smiley, Clayton Post as Pete, Charlotte Lawrence as Dottie, and Jerry Hausner as Collins. Featured in the cast were Junius Matthews, Herb Butterfield, and Dick Ryan. John Hodiak can soon be seen starring in the Allied Artists production, Dragonfly Squadron. And remember, next week, Mr. Herbert Marshall in action. You can buy Autolite resistor or standard type spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts, and Autolite stay full batteries at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Your eyes are your finest possession. Take care of them, and they will watch out for you. For a free folder on eye care, send a postcard to Prevention of Blindness, Box 426, Radio City, New York. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>